What is going on you guys? It's your boy Tony Holiday, back at it again, another video. Today I actually wanna do something kind of in addition to one of my previous videos. So one of my more popular ones is the Ultimate Trap Drum tutorial, which a lot of you guys have done some a lot of love to, upvotes, comments, likes, all that good stuff. There's kind of a little bit of a other half to it that I didn't touch on before, but I finally figured out how to do it and I think it really benefit you guys. So a lot of the times, one of the main complaints that I get is when you put your third party samples into Ultrabeat, they actually come in way hotter than they actually just sound as an audio file. A lot of people have expressed frustration with this, including myself, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to make Ultrabeat essentially just replay the audio signal as is, as if you just dragged in a WAV file to your project. We're gonna be using one of my old Trap Drum tutorial templates. The new template that we make with this one, I'm actually gonna put in the description down below, so feel free to go grab that for free. Before we get started, please go follow your boy on all socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. But yeah, guys, let's take our Ultra Beat, let's optimize it so that it's just taking the audio file and basically outputting that, and we're gonna do it all in Logic Pro. But yeah, let's get into it, you guys. Cheers. So you should be able to see my logic screen here. Essentially what I have is just these guys here, which was my old trap drum tutorial template. And then I also have just an audio file sample at the top here. This is a kick that I made in a pack that I'm probably gonna release in the next little bit here. But essentially what I wanna do guys is just kind of orchestrate to you why Ultrabeat is super frustrating with this and then how we can change it so that it's actually really easy to just make beats quickly and they're all gonna be under the clipping level. They're not gonna be too hot, anything like that. So the first thing I wanna do, you guys, is when we play this audio file, is just take a look at the signal down in this area, and it'll kind of show you what we're um, what we're sitting at. Now, what we wanna do is take that signal and then route it through Ultrabeat so that we can use the step sequencer, and it's easier to program drums quickly. But yeah, let's take a listen. As you can see, we're sitting at about negative three decibels. So let's make that happen in Ultrabeat. If I go into Ultrabeat here, so I'm gonna take the same sample that I just played you and I'm gonna drag it onto the Ultrabeat kick sample there. And as you can see, now we get this. You can already see that it's sitting at negative 2.4, which is different than the negative three. As you can see here as well, if we go into making a little pattern and we play this back, it's at 1.2 already clipping over. So that's obviously not what we want. So we want to make it a negative three so that it's easy to drag and drop the samples that we've got from our third party. And they're just the exact same as when we just drag in the audio files. If you haven't already downloaded my previous trap drum template, it's actually this guy right here, which I have for free on my website. Like I said, I'm going to replace this one with the new one that we're making today. But if you have done the old one, feel free to go grab that and then follow along with this. We're essentially going to take all of these effects and modulations that Ultrabeat kind of puts on as a default and we're gonna actually just turn them all off so that it just takes the audio file sample and then just routes it through the output of Ultrabeat. First thing we can do here is go to this mod on the volume wheel, so that's the modulation of the volume, and we can actually take that max, turn it off, and then you can see here this little red kind of dial. Essentially what that is, is our volume level. So we're at negative 50 decibels. So if we play this, as you can see here, we're at negative 50 on our mixer. So that's obviously not good. We wanna bring that up. So you can hold option and click that and it'll bring it up to negative six, but then you can also just bring it up to zero, which is what I do. The next thing we wanna do here is go to this envelope four. It's also the amplifier. And we just wanna hold on release there and click option and click that as well, which is kind of like the default release is what they would say. It's about a second long. So that just makes sure that the entire sample is gonna be played over a second uh, period, essentially. From that point, we're gonna go up to this modulation wheel on the voice volume here, and we're gonna turn off the VEL, which is velocity. So that goes to off, and we can click the hold option and click that wheel to bring it to zero dB. Now we can actually take this little arrow, click that so it turns into the screw. We can turn off this LFO up here, band two, band one. And this is kind of like just a default, very, very, very plain ultra beat which is going to play our kick sample here. So let's take a listen to this now and see how it is in comparison to the audio file. As you can see, the MIDI file is now sitting at negative three, just like with our audio file here, as well as at negative three. That's essentially the kind of goal here of what we wanna do, because we're just taking these samples from the third party that we get, maybe whether it's on Splice or maybe you're finding them on Reddit or things like that, and you wanna be able to put them into Ultrabeat and then use the full view step sequencer and have no problems. Because a lot of the time previously, when you have all the default stuff on, it's actually just coming in too hot. It's been affected throughout the drum synthesizer. We just want it plain. Something to keep in mind, however, 
this isn't exactly the same. I believe there is a little bit of compression done through the ultra beat um, algorithm, but something to keep in mind as well is that when you are making trap, you are doing things like hi-hat rolls, snare rolls, stuff like that. So what I typically would do is actually take this kick. I would do exactly what we did on this one, turn off the LFO, all the other modulations. I would do the clap snare, the snare, the open hat, the perk, and the perk too. Now for the hi-hat, however, I want to do something different. And the reason is, is because we want to do those hi-hat rolls that sometimes have softer touches when they're going up or down, or maybe they're doing a little bit higher when they're going up. So you're going to go to this hi-hat one here. Let's get a hi-hat sample in there. So we'll go into the drum playground, grab hi-hat one. And now we're going to do a lot of the same things we just did with the kick. So we can actually get the release out by holding option, clicking that. We can turn off the LFO. We can turn off band two, band one. Don't route it to the filter. We can actually turn off the voice on the envelope for and bring it up to zero dB. Now this modulation wheel right here with the volume is what we want to focus on. So for example, if I go back to the kick here and we go into this window here. So I've soloed this out to just be negative three decibels. If we change the velocity on this, as you can see, it doesn't actually change the amount of gain that's being put through Ultra Beat. When we want to do it with the hi-hats, so we'll go to this one here, let's create a little pattern as well. So we'll go down and we'll create a little pattern. Take a quick little listen. Super standard, super boring, but let's actually put some rolls in there. So maybe we want to do like, I don't know, something like here and maybe like here as well. We also need to lift this up and go into Ultra Beat and put the pitch down one octave back into Ultra B. Let's do like another roll like this. So now we have these, these are kind of our hi-hat rolls here. Kind of a cool little roll, but they just sound so bland. We obviously want to modulate the velocity. So what we can do is go back into Ultra Beat go up to the sample 25 where we have the hi-hat sampled. We have everything off. The envelope four is the one we want. The voice volume is set right. The LFO is off. All that is good, but we didn't touch the modulation for the volume knob. So what we actually want to do here is turn the minimum volume up here. I like to go to about negative 12. And then this guy, the green one, we're going to drag down to zero. So there's a 12 decibel difference between the original volume and then also the um, velocity modulated volume, if that makes sense. We can go into our hi-hats here. We can press A and it's gonna bring up this little automation window for our MIDI. It might come default onto volume there. What you wanna do is go down to note velocity. And now what you can do is you can actually modulate the velocities of these notes just by doing stuff like that. So now what happens, these little dots with the line here represent each MIDI note here. So now we can press A to close that again. And now, as you can see, we have our hi-hat pattern, but these guys are modulated with different velocities. And now let's take a listen to it to make sure that they're actually playing those different velocities. So you see how this one up here was a little bit softer. These ones were a little bit harder there. That's how you can actually make hi-hat rolls sound interesting. And it's really cool to do with snares as well. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, follow your boy, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. And have fun making beats, guys. I hope this one helped you out and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.